Hello friend, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I wanted to share with you my favorite default Procreate brushes. These brushes are available on either the iPad and or iPhone version and wanted to share how I use them in different paintings. There are so many wonderful brushes on Procreate, but these are the brushes that I come back to the most and are my favorite to use. So the first brush I wanted to talk about today is the light pen. The light pen has so many wonderful uses. It can be found in the luminance section on Procreate. Um, I love to use it in portraits and in landscape to add subtle glows and to brighten the highlights in the eyes. But it has one more use, and you'll see sugar and spice here, um, that I love to use it for. So you're going to set your color to black and... It, you can make eyelashes with it. It makes like the literal best eyelashes you can find and they'll taper in real nice at the ends. Um, but you'll definitely want to make sure you set your opacity down. You can make thin eyelashes too. And you'll see me go back through here in just a second and do a more natural set. But this is a great way to make your portrait eyelashes really pop and to help avoid like stick eyelashes. But this brush is so great for so many things. So the next brush that I wanted to definitely talk about is the Narinder pencil. This pencil is very versatile and I absolutely love it. I love to use this brush for sketching, creating details or tiny details in a painting, and you can find it in the sketching section in Procreate. But the Narinder pencil has enough flow and texture in the default brush that you really don't have to do a lot to it, and it blends with a ton of different painting textures. So it makes it really nice later on when you're using different painting textures, you can always use the Narinder pencil to add teeny tiny details that maybe the bigger um, painting brush can't add because there's a lot of painting texture brushes that are large and can't do those tiny details. A lot of times some of the painting texture details will pixelate up close and the Narinder pencil does not. So see, you'll see me here create a new set of flowers in one of my landscape paintings. And you'll find that the Narinder pencil layers on top of itself really well, almost like an itty bitty paintbrush, like something super fine. And I love that you can use it either as a pencil or a tiny paintbrush, but the painting you see behind it um, is actually using the damp brush. So you can see how the Narinder pencil and the damp brush work really well together. And a moment ago with the portrait painting, I used a whole different set of watercolor brushes so you can really see how well those two textures play against each other. It's just such a great tool to be able to create really fine details that some other brushes can't do. So the next brush we're gonna be talking about is the damp brush. This brush right now, I believe is only available on the iPhone version of Procreate, um, which is a shame because it is like literally my second most favorite brush out of any set. It is my go-to brush for all of my landscape paintings. This brush definitely mimics a more natural oil or acrylic paint look, which can be a definite struggle with some digital brushes, especially if you're used to a more traditional medium. And this brush is what really opened my eyes when I first started on Procreate to what digital painting could be and made me really excited to start relearning how to paint on my iPad. I find that this brush works best when the opacity of the grain is turned down. It creates a more soft blend when you use the blur tool. So the next brush that I absolutely love to use on Procreate is the technical pen. Um, now with this brush, I have a shaky hand sometimes and it really helps me to turn up the stabilizer and turn down the flow a little bit to create more uniform uniformity in my line work. <laughs> I'm definitely not Englishing well today. You refer me to, what was that? I don't know. But anyways, I love to use this brush in my line work. So I also wanted to mention too, when I turn down the uh, flow a little bit, I also like to taper the points in a little bit because I feel like sometimes it's very triangle shaped at the end. So I definitely turn that to more of a soft round shape. And that's talking about the actual shape taper of the brush. I use this brush with every coloring page I make, so if you're someone who loves to illustrate, this will definitely be a good brush for you. This brush doesn't pixelate too bad either, and yet it still looks crisp and soft from afar and up close. I definitely would recommend upping that stabilization on it though to prevent your lines from being wiggly. You definitely don't want a wiggly illustration or anything doing the wave. So the last couple of brushes we're going to be talking about, I've actually grouped them together because I use them a lot together. The first being the soft airbrush, which is probably my favorite default Procreate brush of all. 
I use it in almost every painting I do and has a variety of different uses from laying down color to sketching to blending. The second brush we're gonna be using is the medium airbrush. It's very similar to the soft airbrush, but will create harder edges and more blunt blends. The third you will see demonstrated with is the acrylic brush. And while I don't use this one as much anymore, it was one of the very first painting texture brushes I ever used. It's not great to lay down color with, um, and that's where the airbrushes come in handy. It's a great brush to use in the smudge tool to create a painted texture that the airbrushes just can't create on their own. So I wanted to do this quick little demonstration of this Daylily here using a couple of the different brushes we've talked about. This is using the technical pen, both airbrushes, and the acrylic painting tool. So the key with the airbrush in general, and really with all brushes, is to build it up in layers. And this is really, for me, why I always come back to the soft airbrush for the blends. I feel like up close, as well as far away, they give the smoothest gradient. And I start by creating that gradient with the, the bigger colors first, the colors that are the most prevalent in the painting, and then working up into those little details. I like to use um, the medium airbrush a lot to erase the edges. It really creates a nice sharp edge. So here you're gonna see me switch over to the acrylic paintbrush, and I really like to use this brush very sparingly. We don't wanna erase all of the work we just did with both of those airbrushes, but it can really add some texture that the soft airbrush can't give. Um, here you'll see me flip it into black and white as well. And in a layer that's very light in the overlay function, I like to take in a very small size to add some texture over top. That'll really help marry all of those areas of color together. And by putting it in black and white, you can really see what areas need to be brightened and darkened, and you can really make your painting pop that way. But that is how I love to use that brush um, and how well those two brushes really work together. So I thought it would actually be kind of fun to include some honorable mentions as well. These are brushes I still use occasionally, but not as much as the ones we just talked about. The first being the Bakke Light Pen. And please don't judge me, I'm not sure if I'm saying it right, but this brush can be found in the luminance section. It creates a lot of really fun and colorful light flares. I love to use this pen in the overlay or soft light function. It can be a really fun and creative way to add a little pop of color to your landscape or your background. The next brush is the 6B Pencil. This brush is a super fun one to sketch with, and it does a really nice job of mimicking an actual pencil texture. So if you love sketching, this is a great brush for you. So the last brush I wanted to feature was the Snow Brush, and I don't get to use this brush a whole lot in my normal everyday work, but whenever I do a snow scene, I absolutely love incorporating it. I really love to use this brush in either soft light or overlay. It just creates a really soft, beautiful effect over any winter scene. But thank you so much for watching, friend. These are just a couple of my favorite brushes, and I hope you were able to take something from this video. I would love to know what your favorite Procreate brushes are or favorite brush in general is. Please feel free to share below. And if you like this content, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video, friend. Happy painting!